Hello everyone, welcome to my 1cc commentary for Metal Slug 2. Today I am playing this on the RetroArch emulator rather than playing it on the Mister. The reason for that being that Metal Slug 2, the original arcade version, suffers from a severe slowdown issue where the frame rates will crawl to an absolute turtle speed. And when I say severe, I mean even in terms of Metal Slug games, which all are plagued with slowdown. The Metal Slug 2 slowdown was so bad that they ended up having to re-release the game as Metal Slug X with some remix stages and stuff like that. But essentially the reason why Metal Slug X exists is because of the slowdown issues of Metal Slug 2 where I can imagine no customer in their right mind would want to play it, even little kids. I can imagine them sitting around through all the really, really horrendous slowdown. So with that being said, I decided to turn the CPU speed in RetroArch up to 200%, essentially removing all the slowdown. And while this definitely makes the game more fun, it also makes it quite a bit more challenging, I would say, especially the last stage and the final boss, which became a very deep point of frustration for me. This has been one of the most frustrating clears I've ever gotten in my life. I think the only other one that's been more frustrating was my Dodonpachi to all. But this thing has been a beast, and the reason for it is because of the massive uh, difficulty spike in the last stage and on the final boss, and the tons of RNG that's also involved in that. I'll get out to all, I'll get to all that when we get there. But anyway, Metal Slug 2 in itself, I think, is a really great sequel to Metal Slug if you take out the slowdown issue. And speaking one last thing about the slowdown, I do know that there was some sort of revised ROM that someone put out there that removes the slowdown. And that you could play this ROM on a Neo Geo or something like that. My, or on the Mister. My thing is though, I have tried that ROM and I still think it's too laggy. So I still prefer just to play it sped up on emulator. And actually if you check out this channel, the very first video on this channel is my very first Metal Slug 1cc clear on Final Burn Alpha way back in the day. And in that clear I also sped up the CPU so I didn't have to wait around through all the slowdown. But anyway, back on the topic of Metal Slug 2 as a game, I know there is a little bit of debate debate among people about which is better, 2 or X, as far as just the general game design. I personally think 2 is definitely the better one. X is harder, there's no doubt about it, but I think X is harder in ways that I don't really appreciate and enjoy. It is, feels even more kind of chaotic and random than Metal Slug 2, which is quite an accomplishment. Of the series, I would put Metal Slug 2 probably as my second favorite Metal Slug. So the order goes, Metal Slug 1 is my favorite, Metal Slug 2 is my second favorite. Then I guess if you want to count Metal Slug X, I would stick Metal Slug X in there. Maybe after that, Metal Slug 4 or something? I'm not a huge fan of 3 because of how massively long it is and bloated it feels, but... I'm going to start playing a little bit more 3. I mean, I've got to, once you see the whole series, right? And 3 is next on the list, unfortunately. So maybe my opinion on 3 will change if I spend another 20 hours going for the clear or ever how long that clear is going to take. One thing that also makes getting clears in the Metal Slug series pretty frustrating and intense is the fact that you don't get any extends. So this is the definition of a quarter muncher in many ways. And I think... This is why uh, there are so many versions of Metal Slug, so many sequels. I think it was the main bankroll for Neo Geo for many, many years, to be honest. I think this was by far the most profitable series. I would love to get actual hard data to back that up. This is just my assumption, but I think it holds true. And I think it is, in my opinion, the Neo Geo's signature series, right? Like, if you could only take one thing off the Neo Geo and move it into the future, I think the Metal Slug series would be it. As much as I love the Metal uh, Neo Geo's fighting games and stuff, like King of Fighters and all that, I would still probably pre and the shmups, of course, like Blazing Star and Pole Star. I still think that the Metal Slug series is where it's at. I do know uh, one of the hosts of uh, the Game Fellas, a podcast that I was a part of. I think it's coming back here in the near future. Um, he wasn't a huge fan of the game, and it kind of became a little bit of a running joke throughout the series that I was try that I'd bring up Metal Slug at any opportunity I could. Uh, maybe one day he will be won over by its amazing uh, game design and spectacular visuals. And it's just hard for me to quite understand why people would dislike Metal Slug, but you know, 
to each their own, right? Anyway, so speaking of Metal Slug 2, this is probably my favorite stage of the game for many reasons. I love the game design. I love the soundtrack. It is probably my favorite Metal Slug song. And also, you gotta love this part where you fly the ship and battle this boss. This is my favorite boss fight, probably because it's in a ship. But I also think it's just really fun to... You have to find little safe spots and the dodges can be quite challenging. Look at that tiny bit of slowdown. So even with 200% CPU, you still get a little bit of slowdown. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, safe spots you can abuse on this guy. The big one being, of course, when he stands up, you can fly underneath him. But if you're on foot, you can actually, when he's crouched down like this, you can crouch right at... Oh, I'm going to do it right here. So you can crouch down right there, and that's a safe spot. So even though you lose, I generally don't lose my ship, but sometimes you do. And when you do, not all hope is lost because you can uh, crouch in those safe spots. This pattern is one of the most dangerous. I'm really hoping... Okay, so I do make it through that fight without dying. The way this goes is I basically need to no-miss the entire game up until the final stage. Because there are just some real BS sections in the final stage that planned deaths are almost going to be required. I mean, of course, you can no-miss the game, but it gets real janky and random. So the key to this stage, stage 4 is to very slowly advance through the stage. Um, this is one of the few stages in Metal Slug where rushing is not the preferred way to survive. You'll be surprised at how many levels in Metal Slug you'll see coming in later sections here where the optimal way to survive is literally just to run full speed and uh, suppressive fire everyone. But uh, this stage, the opening section, you want to take it easy. The real frustrating part about this, I figured this out here, is you don't want to get those power-ups because you end up be being given right before then a ton of bullets and you actually it's much better to have a bunch of heavy machine gun than to have just a few you know rockets or whatever you get this section is a, a especially obnoxious in metal slug x where you get these wells that shoot missiles and people flanking you and oh man this stage itself in metal slug x is incredibly obnoxious i much prefer the metal slug 2 version Another thing you'll notice here, what I'm doing, I'm not milking for points even though it kind of looks like it. What I was doing was waiting for that food to disappear. The reason being is that if you collect too much food in the game, you go into this fat state. And I'm not entirely sure if that fat sta state is supposed to be punishing or not. Because it kind of seems like I, I find it punishing personally, so that's why I avoid it. I do think you do more damage in that state, but you're also much slower. And I think... You're just easier to hit in general. So that's why I don't like to use it. This helicopter fight. Uh, the fun part about that fight is it's actually really easy. All you have to do is duck and fire. But the thing about Metal Slug is a lot of the patterns of the game are just meant to psych you out and make you jump. Jumping in Metal Slug in all of the games, especially in this game, is generally a bad idea. Because you are incredibly vulnerable when you jump. Not only because your jump is really floaty and it takes forever to land, but also because you have no mid-air control. It's like a Castlevania-style jump where you just are fixed in, you're locked in, and your amount of horizontal movement isn't all that good either. You're going to have to do jumps, of course, and utilize them, but they're always sort of a last resort. If you can keep your feet on the ground, do so. Another huge hallmark of Metal Slug, especially the early ones, and this is why I like the early ones more than the later ones, is of course being able to pilot your Metal Slug, that's the tank if you all don't know, very effectively because the Metal Slug is often the difference between life and death in these stages, especially in the boss fights. I believe in this game you can take the Metal Slug throughout uh, the boss fight in every single stage, even the last stage actually, which it plays a very important, very important role on the final boss. So what you want to do here is you kind of want to line it up a certain way where if you go too far to the left or right, it'll overextend and it'll hit you. There's like this little optimal spot, I'm showing it right here, where if you just stand there and jump, it'll kind of shoot your feet the entire time. So this is one of the sections where jumping is pretty effective if you can get it set up correctly. I'm in a very strange spot there. Another thing you have to watch out for in this fight is the obstacles in front of you, whether it's the slopes or these little uh, steps you have to go up. Whatever it is, 
um, you can get very easily trapped. Your metal slug is pretty slow moving, and so that thing can actually just uh, snipe you if you overrun it too much. So that strategy, I think, is a very effective way to approach the boss. Here, another section. It feels like in every Metal Slug game, if there's a city stage, slowly advancing seems to be the way to go. Um, so here you want to slowly advance. You want to be very, very careful of snipers. That's the thing you got to be watching for. So what you want to do is you kind of want to slowly advance on the screen where you can get the sniper on the screen, but not trigger him to fire. And then you can take him out with a grenade. That's kind of the idea. Uh, same thing with if they're on cars or whatever. You just want to blow up the cars they're on. If you try and jump over the car, they snipe you out of the air. It's another booby trap. This game is littered with jump booby traps. Here we go. I'm slowly advancing. This section here, what you want to do... See, there you go. I bombed him before he could fire. That's a very nasty setup. Same thing with that. So then we're going to get the choppers coming in here. The idea is right when they spawn on screen, you want to jump and grenade them. That just makes the fight a lot faster. Here, you don't have to grenade this guy, but I tend to just to keep things simple. Hit him with about two or three. Oh, yeah. I should also mention that grenade management is in intensely important to the routing of this game. When it comes to routing Metal Slug, the two main things you're always thinking about is, okay, where do, where can I get away with crouching and shooting? Because crouch shooting is very powerful in this game. And where do I need to grenade? And can I grenade or, or can I avoid grenading? This section is all about crouch shooting. Um, I um, know people who first pick up this game, this section is going to be absolutely a nightmare for you because it's very specific it requires a lot of very specific setups. It has a lot of booby traps, and it has the most infamous section in Metal Slug history, in my opinion. I reference it a lot whenever I go to Justify Turbo, which are these trains that you have to basically just shoot. And if you don't have auto fire on, which in the arcade you generally don't, you're going to die to them. It's basically a button mashing test. And so I always like to bring this section up in my videos about why turbo should be allowed and why this whole mentality that turbo is cheating is kind of dumb especially with games like metal slug where if you're grinding this out for 20 hours you know it's your arm's gonna fall off you're only gonna you're only gonna be able to play about one or two runs a day or one or two runs a sitting simply because of the amount of mashing you need to do so the the way you approach this section here is you want to do corner to corner and then crouch so crouch shooting is really good for for a number of reasons. One, a lot of projectiles will fly over your head, like the shots from the uh, tank here, and also just a lot of the shots from the enemies will go over your head. Another reason why is a lot of enemies can't knife you. See, when they go to do these jumping knife attacks or they come up to stab you, if you're crouch shooting, you almost always kill them before they get you. So, crouch shooting is a very, very powerful technique in Metal Slug across all the games. You can see me doing it here again. The reason why is sometimes they can just land and slash you, but if you're crouching, I don't know what it is. Watch, see? They just won't hit you. They won't hit you. Um, so it's definitely very good. I think if they line it up just right, they might land on you, but I mean, it, it definitely improves your safety in that regard. So laser routing here. This section here it's very important to, to know your routing and to know what to do because otherwise you're going to get swarmed. So what you want to do, and there's kind of a meta to this that I'll try to explain. Of course, first you want to collect the laser because the laser is the best weapon in the game. And whenever you have a laser, life is good. So the way this works, though, is if you crouch, they will climb. And so what you want to do is whenever they land, you want to crouch shoot. That will force them upward, and then you shoot them from beneath this is how you deal with these guys for a long time I really struggled on these guys because I did not remember the power of crouching and shooting in this game it's just really good for a lot of reasons so if they ever get on the ground start crouching and start shooting the big vulnerability of crouching is uh, turning around you know it's a little bit slower your your movement is slower of course I think you can still crawl in Metal Slug 2 I can't quite remember if you can or not in Metal Slug 1, you can actually crawl as you crouch. I can't remember if you can in 2 or not. Uh, 2 actually removes a fair, some of your movement options from 1. Um, in 1, a lot of people don't know this, you can actually short hop in 1. If you do a little tap on the button, you'll do a little short hop. 
And two, they removed that. I can't remember if they removed the crouching or not. I guess people in the comments can weigh in. So the, what you want to do here is you want to take out the demons on the top with your uh, free aim heavy gun thing. And then you want to just uh, take out the swarms with your cannon. Managing the cannon with the uh, metal slug is very underrated. Uh, this section here is pretty funny. You just take them out on the stairs. Do not allow them to get below the stairs. You also get this nice uh, forward facing rocket instead of the uh, regular rocket. That's really nice for this part right here where you just want to sort of outrange them and then just take them out with the, the rocket. So this fight here, this boss fight here can go, there's a lot of RNG involved in this one and it can go a lot of different ways. If you can get him to behave himself, so you want to do is you want to line up it just like this. You hit the sort of bottom left corner with your machine gun and then you hit the top with your rocket launcher like that. That does a ton of damage. Another thing too about controlling the metal slug some people don't know is that if you crouch and grenade instead of using your normal missile you'll use your grenades. That was an incredibly good one. I took a hit, but, you know, I'm not playing for score, so it really doesn't matter. This opening part here is one of the stupidest part in the game. You have to do this, so, this sort of do -si do sort of jump, crouch, and then grenade. And hope that the RNG gods are in your favor. That time they were. If they're not in your favor, you will die on that section. Uh, it's one of my least favorite sections in the entire game. Very, very chaotic and random and um, ugly. I think if you have a really good setup, you'll get it every time, but the setup's pretty precise. The thing about this part here is you just want to take it easy. Uh, don't get too anxious. Don't jump when you don't need to. Uh, this part here, again, they have the high ground. That's not good. You don't want to advance too quickly because there's that sniper waiting to hit you out of your jump. Again, this game's all about, especially this last stage, it's all about picking you off when you jump. So. If you can avoid jumping, avoid jumping because there's a lot of booby traps out there. These guys spawn. You don't want to move ahead too quickly because you have this uh, kind of broken bridge section. There's a very specific rhythm you want to do this in and I hopefully get it. We'll see. So you want to jump when you know how there's waves. You want to jump your very first jump to land on the bottom of one of the waves. Then you want to make it through. Oh, oh, okay. I make it through. That was scary. Oh boy. Now the mid-boss. This mid-boss is real tough and gets real ugly. The strategy I do, there's lots of different strategies I've seen people do. This one I, I still uh, have found the most consistent. It's not as efficient as some of the other ones, but it, it seems more consistent, which is you sort of camp out this top right corner here. You pick off the little guys as they spawn, and then once you get them up here like that, um, there's a rhythm where if you crouch and jump and fire, it's kind of hard to explain. Oh, damn. I knew I messed that up somewhere. That was a really bad jump. What it was is that I thought I basically had him dead. And I very, I got antsy. And I made a very irrational jump. Breaking the golden rule of Metal Slug, which is don't jump if you don't need to. And I didn't need to. And I jumped right into his bullet. I remember it being like, son of a bee. Because I have a very good run up to this point. Again, the best way to beat this game is to not die going into the final boss because the final boss is absurd and full of RNG and I've had, I think I had three or four runs end on the final boss and like not that far away from the clear and it was very frustrating. One of them I was really pissed at because it was purely bad RNG and I'll explain how that turned out when we get there but yeah RNG can really wreck you on that final boss fight. So there we go, the power of crouch firing. You just want to get this part here, you kind of want to do a little do -si do I don't know what the term for it is, but you kind of just go back and forth, back and forth. You do that a lot in this stage where you crouch and you turn left, you crouch and you turn right. Come up here, shoot this guy up here. You'll get a little, uh, I think, bomb, right? Bomb power up or heavy machine gun. Okay, bombs. Bombs are very important now because you want to save up as much as you can for the final fight. Uh, the more you have for your final fight, the better. I can't remember if I successfully do that in this run or not because I basically have two routes. I have the lots of bombs route and I have the oh crap I have no bombs route now I got to do this risky milk strategy or uh, 
not necessarily milking, but it's this sort of strategy that involves waiting around and hoping you get good luck. Anyway, I'll get I'll talk about that when we get there. So through this section here, this part kind of sucks. What you want to do is you want to sort of advance slowly, but you have to constantly turn around and kill the stuff behind you. If you advance too far on the screen, you'll get stuff spawning around you on all sides and you'll basically get, you'll be dead boy. Uh, here, the idea is you want to take out this alien in this little uh, TV thing, TV cage thing up there because you want that flamethrower. You always have to be mindful of guys dropping bombs They'll kind of do these sort of suicide bombs too sometimes. That's why you want the flamethrowers for the tanks coming up. Um, yeah, if you don't have it, those tanks are going to really make your day rough because you won't be able to really kill them in time with your pea shooter, your handgun. So here we go. Now I'm going to get rid of my flamethrower because ironically the, the handgun is actually better in this section than the flamethrower because it has better range. Now it's all about the range and the crouch... This is abusing the crouch uh, shooting mechanic to the max. That is for sure. Watch. It's all about just setting up where you sit and crouch shoot. Right here. As long as you're auto firing and crouching, their bullets will not hit you. Their bullets won't do it. It's scary because it looks like they will, but they won't. As long as you hold your ground and keep crouching and cre keep shooting, those bullets will not hurt you because you'll knife them before they'll get you which is really, really nice and sort of my fundamental strategy for getting through this section because otherwise this section is a nightmare. But, uh, okay, so I got stuck on the top. Another sort of golden rule in Metal Slug is don't be on top platforms if you can avoid it generally unless it's good routing because normally you're just a sitting duck up there and you can't really cover the screen as well from the top as you can from the bottom, especially if you have a heavy machine gun. Here we go. Now I just slowly advance. Keep crouch firing, keep crouch firing, don't get too antsy, don't, for the love of Akeda, do not jump. You'll jump right into a bullet. Again, this game really preys on your, your fear and your desire to jump over bullets and things like that. This isn't Mario, stay on the damn ground, that's for sure. So here we have the shotgun. The shotgun really is not that good in this section. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sit here and just fire it till I get rid of it. You really do want either a heavy machine gun or your pistol. Those are better uh, weapons for this section, in my opinion. At least the way that I route it. I think the developers figured they were doing you a favor when they gave you the shotgun, but I didn't. I don't really find it all that useful because you have to sort of change your routing and get a little bit up close and personal to make it work. There's a dude hanging up 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 there the whole time. I'm a little bit annoyed I don't shoot him, but I think there's a reason for it. I really do. I think he gives you either. I think he gives you a shotgun or something like that. I know. I remember there was some reason why I don't uh, save that guy. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going for score. He, there are no extends, and I know the item he gives you is either is counterproductive or useless. One of the two. So here, this is how you do it. Uh, you want to sit and park yourself on the left side and then shoot the right. Strangely enough. Uh, the pattern will act differently if you're on the right side. So the pattern is more aggressive if you get on the right. But if you stay on the left, it is much e easier to contain. And so be on the left side. Don't be on the right side. Here we go. I think I'm going to heavy machine gun. That's what I'm talking about. Take this guy out early. And then crouch in the corner. The corner in your section is your friend. There's nothing they can do about it unless they get behind you. They got behind me. <laughs> But I was able to turn around and cover it. That was actually uh, more clutch than it looks. Because uh, turning around while crouching is kind of a tricky input. It may not seem like it, but it kind of is. Because usually what ends up happening is when you go to turn around, you'll accidentally stand. And what happens is you might stand up right into a, a melee attack from those guys. Uh, so s being sure to remain crouched is very important in this section here. So this part always kind of sucks what you got to do is you have to stand up now and you have to kind of uh work your way around these bullets i'm taking my sweet time because i've come too far and suffer too much to die on this son of a bee so i'm taking it real sl that was the scary part right there because uh you got to run through it but uh you got to time it just right now i'm crouched there we go crouch fire crouch fire just crouch down there we go. Now you camp out the corner. As long as they don't get behind you, you're fine. As long as they don't get behind you. 
I remember this part for some re okay. For some reason I No, I think it's later on. Yeah. So you want to advance like that so you don't go too far that way you can get up to the platform. We are in pretty good position. I mean, this was one of my better runs obviously getting to the boss. I actually think I did make it to a boss fight one time with two extend. But the RNG was so horrific that I got destroyed. So now here's where the RNG comes to play. I better explain this real quick. This is incredibly good RNG. So what you want is you want these son of a bitches coming out here to give you good power-ups. And it's completely random what they'll give you. Sometimes they won't give you jack. And basically the run's over. But what you want to do, and this is the hard part, is you want to try and preserve as much arms, as much bullets as you can coming into the next section here the fact that i got so many laser power-ups is incredibly good rng and if i squander it by dying right here even in the replay where i know that i get the clear i'm going to be very angry very clutch jumps very clutch okay i clutched it there so now i've got lots of laser all i need to do yes so we got him damaged look at that laser count it's incredibly important i cannot stress to you how important having a high laser or weapon count is because it's the difference between getting the clear or not. Because I one time came into this with basically no lasers and and did the most incredible dodging of my life on these guys. Oh my god. I remember when this happened, I wanted to throw my controller on the ground and scream. I did get a good amount of laser damage on him though. But that was pretty awful. Because I literally just walked into the ray gun. These these alien guys are a nightmare. I spent hours and hours and hours practicing the dodges on them. It's actually very difficult to dodge these guys. It doesn't look like it because in most games, you could just avoid this shit. But in Metal Slug, you can't. You're like a turtle. You can't jump. You can't control yourself in the air. You have a massive hitbox. You have to, you feel so clunky and slow. Get in that damn Metal Slug. Okay, there's a trick here. I wonder if I do it where you take a hit. Do I take the hit? No, I don't. Okay, I don't even know how I get the clear here. So I get up here. What you want to do is you want to get this Metal Slug up on the platform, and then you need to sort of pacify these guys. I completely fail at that. That could have been the clear had I just done that. I'm way behind now. I have no Metal Slug. I have no laser. I'm in the corner. This is a shitty situation. This should not be a clear. There is no way in hell this should be a clear, except for the fact that I dodge like an insane madman in that last section, get enough damage on him, and then that that beautiful tank spawns on the right there and takes those lasers. Had that tank not spawned, I would have died. But that tank, the RNG was just too kind to me here for to, to deny me the clear. I popped off insanely hard after getting this clear. You have no idea because I had three or four runs die on that final boss and you basically, and I've reset, you know, 12 hours or 10 hours worth of runs because if you die in any of the stages up till stage 6, you might as well just reset because you basically need to no miss the entire game up to that point. This is actually a very challenging clear, much more hard than clearing Metal Slug 1, like probably two times or three times harder than clearing Metal Slug 1. I definitely got it though. I'm really curious how Metal Slug 3 is going to go. I imagine it's going to be incredibly difficult because Metal Slug 3 is a game that just goes on and on forever and ever. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe Metal Slug 3 doesn't have as many BS sections at the end as Metal Slug 2. I hope you all enjoyed this. This has actually been sitting on my hard drive for over a month, I think. I've had this clear for a long time, but it's, you know, it's always about a matter of getting it into the schedule. And so, yeah, thanks so much. And... I'd like to end by thanking my patrons. Adios, everyone. So thank you to 72 PCT Water, Adam Pearson, Adrian Reyes, Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Handicap, Anthony A, Ben, Ben Wynn, Borgie22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Corio, Daniel Savage, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, Dominic NG, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, Geriatric, Don Maku, Hausu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JBRPG, Joe Angelo, Game Boy Guru, K, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Meher Klendrian, Minong, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, N Electron, Nine, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Ram Q, Raul, Real Skeen, Sketchy Raccoon, The Boot Rex, TRM, Sugumo, Plasmo, Yishi, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.